So the conversation I'd like to have with you today is what people are doing today in this era of the great resignation where more than 4.3 million people in July of 2021 have resigned from their jobs. A lot of people are reevaluating work-life balance, the priorities in their life. At the same time, to heart of politics, these mandates, vaccine, no vaccine, how are these things affecting people's economic households and how people are providing for their families? So in this video, we'd like to share with you how to create wealth. My name is Matt Cipolla, commonly known as a money smart guy. I host a YouTube channel called The Seven Figure Squad and I'm the chief distribution officer of PHP Agency. My wife and I are the number one income earners of this company and we've been here for now going on seven years. My background comes from the United States Marine Corps where I served in three deployments, two combat tours, in eight years in the United States Marine Corps as a sergeant. <laughs> Matter of fact, my biggest year of cash flow in the military and salary was $22,500 per year. I'm nobody special. Our family comes from an immigrant family from the Philippines. I'm a first generation born here in America. I have zero sales, zero business background, zero financial background. And so later on in this video, you'll also hear from fellow first generation cash flow millionaire, George Palayo, who's half Puerto Rican and half Cuban. You'll also hear from my wife, who's half white, half black, Cuban, and American Indian. We are a multicultural company and we enjoy talking about money and helping create an answer for what's going on in the middle class multicultural community today. First way to make money in a country is to be an employee. You work for somebody. You clock in, you clock out, you get a salary, and you make money. And the first thing that gets taken from your paycheck is taxes. The second way to make money in our country is work for yourself called self-employed or smart. You're a doctor, you're an attorney, you're an engineer, you're working for yourself. As a self-employed person, which I did for 14 years, coming out of the military, I was an independent life insurance agent. I was working for myself. A lot of pressure is put on your shoulders as a self-employed person, but yet 90% of people in America make their money these one or two ways. The idea in this book, Cash Flow Quadrant, Robert Kiyosaki, discusses how to go from this side to this side, to go from self-employed and then go to business owner. So what is a business owner? Just because you go to Vistaprint and you put uh, on the title there, CEO or business owner, doesn't make you a business owner. A business owner is defined as somebody and that owns a business and runs it with systems and processes and there's over 500 employees, 500 independent contractors, 500 brand ambassadors working your business and you're starting to build an asset and this asset is kicking out cash. You got to find a way to invest that cash and that's where you slide from a business owner into an investor. Now you're just investing in companies, businesses, brands, and now you are just printing money. For example, the late great Kobe Bryant was a recent guest at one of our big events in August in Las Vegas. And one of his recent investments, sadly before he passed away, was investing $6 million into his little company called Body Armor. Body Armor was recently acquired by Coca-Cola. It turned a $6 million investment into $400 million now paid to Kobe Bryant's estate to help out his wife, children, and his legacy. See, that's what that means to become an investor. But here's the sad part with a lot of people in America. Since a lot of people in America are living paycheck to paycheck, they don't have disposable or investable cash left over to invest. Let's take a quick look at what life is like today compared to what it was like in 1990. It wasn't that long ago. In 1990, for a four-year public college tuition, it'd take you $30,000 to get your four-year degree. Hey, man, go to school, go to college, go to college. Why? Because your parents or even your grandparents went to college at this type of cost. But if you fast forward to get your four year college degree in 2021, it went for $30,000. Now it's the $103,456 just to get your four year college degree to make a 40, 50, $60,000 a year starting job out the gates. And question for yourself is, does that financially make sense? The other aspect here is looking at the average home price. Back in 1990, the average home in America cost 101 thousand dollars and fast forward in 2021 four hundred eight thousand dollars for your average home in america here's the crazy part look at this number here so in other words in 2021 103 thousand dollars to go to college would have bought a home back in 1990 a brand new house for you but today a home is four hundred eight thousand dollars now do the number though 
Let's say you factor in the cost of minimum wage. The cost of federal minimum wage has been raised in most states to $15 an hour. Okay, $15 an hour times 2,080, which is the amount of hours that you work entire year, assuming a 40 hour work week, you'd make approximately $31,000, $32,000. Let me ask you this question though. A person making $15 an hour, making $31,000, $32,000 a year, gross, do they have enough income to buy the average home in America? Think about this, you're making 15 bucks an hour. Can you buy the average home in America of $408,000? I think any mortgage loan officer, mortgage expert would tell you no. Now what about the cost of gas? Ooh, this is a sensitive subject. So think about this right now. The average cost of gas in America is $3.40, up from $1.12, the cost of raising a child. For those of you who have kids, $120,000 to raise a child back in 1990 from birth to 18 years old. Today, over $233,000 to raise a child from birth to 18 years old. How many have one child, two kids, three kids, four kids? Now, how about a new car? A brand new car back in 1990 was $9,432. A brand new car today is $45,000 for a brand new car. I mean, what's that car payment? Depending on assuming that you have good credit, what's a $45,000 car payment over a four, five, maybe even six year period? Do the math. The cost of things to live on, to have your life here in the United States of America has just skyrocketed to 300%. But check this out though, here's a number though. Median household income, $52,689 was 1990s average median household income. Fast forward to 2021, average median household income is $79,900. So what hasn't increased in relation to college, what has an increase in relation to average home price, gas, raising a child, a new car? What has an increase by 200, 300% is your income, your cash, which you bring home on a day-to-day -day basis. That has not increased by two, 300%. And the big reason why people today are feeling it in their pockets and why a lot of their choices, a lot of the decisions is being limited and people are further and further going into debt. So you and I have a common enemy. What is that enemy? It's called inflation. The rising costs of goods and services. The rising costs of just living in America. A lot of people call that the silent tax. So in other words, you're working hard and harder and harder, but guess what's costing? More and more and more is your food, is your gas, is your home prices to live in. But here's what you can control in this whole table. Here's what you can control. You can control income. You know, oftentimes people say, hey man, I'd love to have passive income. I'd love to have residual income. And they think that only in real estate or certain things in the stock market can they do that. Well, part of that is correct. But what if I could show you in this episode how to create an asset, create a business on a part-time basis that will start to meet and exceed your full-time income if you choose to do the work of this industry with inside this platform. The value I want to share with you is how to create wealth for the rest of your life in four different steps. Number one, you have to consider learning sales. <laughs> Listen, you go to any of these TikTok videos, you know those videos where people say, hey man, they talk to an older gentleman, an older successful entrepreneur, they say, hey, how did you make your money? And you know what the common answer with many of them is? Whatever it is, it's gotta be in sales. Uh, in fact, there's a book out there called The Millionaire Next Door. You know what the Dr. Thomas Stanley discovered in The Millionaire Next Door? He discovered that many of them were either high level executives or they had a career in sales. Now, if you're anything like me and you didn't like school and you didn't get a college degree, there's no chance for you to become a high level executive. There's nothing going to be chief in front of your name. There's no chief title ever going to be in your name. That's what I thought. But here's what you can be. You can be a salesperson. You can be a sales leader. You can start a business. You can become a CEO by understanding sales. Guess what learning sales allows me to do with my children? It allows me to communicate with them a lot better, a lot more frequently. It allowed me to become a better husband. Now, I got a lot of work to do. I'm not perfect by any means, but compared to where I was, we've eliminated a lot of the arguments that plague a lot of couples today. In sales, you get to control your income. Now people say, well, you know, man, it's pretty risky. It's pretty risky. You know, if you don't sell anything, you don't make any money. That's true. What's the alternative though? You have a job that still doesn't pay you anything. So what would you rather have more control over? Your boss hopefully getting you a pay raise or you give yourself a pay raise. I like control. I like maintaining control because here's the thing. He or she 
that controls your income, controls your life, and the decisions you make in your life. Consider that. And here's the second thing you need to do if you want to create more wealth in 2022 and beyond, is you gotta consider entrepreneurship. I tell you this, nothing has saved my life and changed my last name and future generations more than learning entrepreneurship, understanding what capitalism and free enterprise is in America to take charge of your finance, to take charge of your destiny. What, is the, what does it say in the Declaration of Independence? To have the pursuit of happiness. Nothing has changed my life more. Listen, I fought for freedom. I fought for this country, not knowing what this country actually provided. And once I discovered what this country actually provided, it was providing a platform in a country where you feel safe and protected to build your dreams. Guess what I discovered? Man, entrepreneurship absolutely changed my life. For once, as an entrepreneur, you can start taking control of your income. Listen, don't think that rich people got there because they had a rich family member. According to Forbes, 83% of all millionaires are self-made, or as we like to call here at PHP Agency, team-made. Because you don't get to where you go without a team, without people around you. Let me ask you this question. How many guys have a cell phone? You have internet at your house, have a car, and uh, once in a while you like to eat food. <laughs> okay? How many guys like to travel the world? How many guys like to travel with inside the continental United States of America? You haven't seen all the different states here in America yet. Well, guess what? As an entrepreneur, my wife and I have been able to go coast to coast, north south, northeast, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, all of the United States of America, and build a business. And because we're building a business, guess what? The IRS says, well, if you're growing a trade or business, those expenses are now what? Tax deductible, if you are a entrepreneur. So our job as a company, PHP agency, people helping people, is to teach the multicultural middle class what the rich have known for generations. Number three, if you wanna make more money, in 2022 and beyond, you have to consider working in the right industry. Hard work does not pay off. Let me do that one more time. Hard work does not pay off if you're working in the wrong industry. If you were to Google industry, most likely to make you a millionaire, you know what comes up on top? No, it's not tech. No, it's not, it's not crypto. No, it's not uh, uh, real estate. You know what comes at number one? It's financial services. Yes, this industry comes at the top of the industries most likely to make you a millionaire. And guess what? On this platform, my wife and I, 37 months, we made our first cash flow million. So we are proof of concept that this platform creates millionaires, that this industry creates millionaires. And by the way, we might have been the first two, but there's many more millionaires after us at PHP Agency. So if you want to work hard, Make sure you work hard in the right industry. And guess what this industry needs? We're looking for more good men and women to communicate and educate and make the awareness that people can get financially ahead, but you need to be working in the right industry. We attract a lot of people from different professions at that. We attract, matter of fact, I was just having a conversation with a nurse the other day. She's got some certain reservations about what her employers are forcing her to do, you know, with this whole pandemic type of situation. And she says, two years ago, I was a hero. Two years, two years ago, I was front line. I was helping people with COVID. I was helping people with the pandemic. Two years ago, I was a hero. Well, based on my religious preferences and the things that I'm wanting to do, guess what now? I'm part of the problem. And she goes, you know what? I don't want to be part of the problem anymore. I want to make money. I'm working hard, sadly, in the wrong industry. I said, you can work hard in this industry. You start on a part-time basis. And when she gets her license in this industry, guess what? She can start making money by serving and helping people taking the same skills, the same empathy she had as a nurse, the same assessment skills she had as a nurse, the same implementation of treatment of care that she did as a nurse to assist people in that way with their financial care, their financial house. So when you look at a different industry to make money, this is it. This industry most likely to make a millionaire is the financial services industry. And last but not least, one thing to consider, if you want to create wealth in 2022 and years beyond, consider choosing the right platform. Let me ask you a question. How can people, when they consider getting involved in the business, they buy a franchise? They buy a 7-Eleven, they buy a hotel, they buy something that's already running and operating. Why? Because they have systems and processes that have stood the test of time, that have been improved and researched and developed over the years. Well, guess what? As a brand new entrepreneur, you're bound to run into mistakes. You're bound to run into speed bumps. You're bound to potentially lose not only money, but worse, time. 
So if you want to save yourself time, energy, money, grief, and get into a position of success right away, that's why people choose a platform. So why would you consider choosing a platform of PHP agency? Well, we have infrastructure here. We have systems, we have processes, we have blueprints, we have manuals on how to sell life insurance. We have the code, we've cracked the code. If you wanna say, hey Matt, if uh, I wanna make $100,000 here in the next 12, 24, 36 months, I wanna make 250,000, I wanna make 500, I'll make, Matt, I wanna make a, a million dollars. Well, we have a platform, and I just wanna let you know, at those income levels, you wouldn't be the first, nor would you be the last person. We help make 100,000, 250, $500,000 if you follow our platform and if you actually commit to at least work on a part-time basis, to work into a full-time basis. Because here's the thing, many of you may be watching this and say, Matt, listen, I don't want to make that much money. It sounds like work. I totally get it. Well, Matt, I just want to make another $500 extra a month. I want to make another $250 extra. I want to make another $1,000 extra a month. Well, knock yourself out. We have plenty of people with inside PHP agency that work on a part-time, even sometimes a sometime type of basis. It's up to you. You're in control. You're an independent contractor. You don't work for PHP agency. I'm not going to be your boss. The person that sent you this video is not going to be your boss. We have zero desire, zero intention to be your boss. We want you to know that if you're considering getting involved in the insurance industry, getting involved on our platform, we want you to know that you're in charge. You're in control. You're the boss. We want you to become a generator, a creator, a person that creates opportunity for other people. And that's what our platform provides. We have systems, we have process, we have infrastructure here at our corporate home office where I'm standing right now recording this video. We have people here that helps you out with commissions department. We have people here that help you with new business department. We have people that help you here with marketing department. We have people here that help you with licensing department, on and on and on. We have people here that help organize conferences and events, so therefore you can plug right into. In our last big event, we had close to 10,000 people in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand Arena. We're a company of this size to reopen back up Las Vegas last year. We reopened up Las Vegas and say, hey, Las Vegas, welcome, PHP is in town. We had Mario Lopez out there, we had Mike Tyson out there with Nikki Jam. It was like, okay, Nikki Jam's like, oh, I'm gonna do an insurance conference, I wonder how it's gonna be. Next thing you know, boom! We surprised them with the energy and the excitement of our platform. So, yo, I'm performing on PHP Agency's platform. Man, it's like he's running a regular concert for the Nikki Jam production team. And it was a blast. Our guys had a blast. We had a celebration. We put on a show on this platform. Every six months, we have a smaller mid-year regional event that the local leadership of different coasts of the country put on together to help celebrate the new up-and-comers that's in our company too as well. So we have a platform of success. We'll teach you sales. We'll teach you entrepreneurship. We'll teach you financial services, how to sell life insurance. We'll teach you all that. We'll teach you leadership and professional development, which for a lot of people think coming in here, they say, you know what? I thought I was just coming in here to sell life insurance. No, man, I'm becoming a better person because we've been able to answer the biggest problem that these couples have been facing for years, decades, which is money. So if you're looking for a platform to associate with other couples, people that are thinking bigger, they want to do bigger. They want to have bigger. Well, that's the platform of PHP Agency. And before I wrap up, just want to let you know, timing is everything. Do you know what these life insurance companies don't have? Sadly, last 30, 40, 50 years, the life insurance industry has been transitioning from insurance agents working in-house as employees to now working as independent contractors in the field. So, for example, if you call a lot of these insurance companies today, say, hey, I want to buy a life insurance policy. You know what a lot of them will say? Yes, call a local agency, and that local agency will sell our life insurance policy. So that's what we're building in the marketplace today. And if you understand timing is everything, there's a right time and a right place to get involved. Sometimes people get involved in the right industry just at the wrong time. And right now, since there's huge demand and not enough supply, well, guess what? This is opening up for you to build a business over the next year, five, 10, maybe even 20 years for you to build something that's an asset that down the road you can create generational wealth and pass on to the next generation. You know what's been lacking in our industry? More women, that's correct. I believe there was a study called Women, Wealth, and Power in 2010, and it said in that report that 60% of all wealth shifted into the control of women. More women today are graduating college. More women today are taking positions in politics. More women today are running corporations. More women today are running nonprofits. More women today are just more well-rounded and well-versed when it comes to this area of career and business. And if you look at the disparity of income and wealth in America, demographic differences 
between income and wealth in America instead of complaining about it. You could be the solution if you feel that your community is underserved and overlooked and things are passing you by. You can be in your community and say, hey, I'm going to help people become aware of this industry. So the idea with us is to make sure you find people that know what you don't know. So therefore, you create a solution to that problem and you don't pass on to the next generation what you've been lacking. At this point of the video, I'd like to turn it over to my wife and have her share her perspective on how to create wealth. So ladies and gentlemen, my wife, Sheena Sapala. Hello everybody, my name is Sheena Sapala and I wanna give you guys my perspective on how to create wealth. Now for me being the first generation millionaire in my entire family, there were certain mindsets and habits that I was taught that I had to change in order to get to where I am today. And I'm hoping you guys have that same perspective as well. Growing up, you're taught a financial blueprint. This blueprint gives you details on not only how to make your income, but when you make that income, what to do with it. Now, my financial blueprint was all about me going to college. Now, my family couldn't afford for me to go to college, but I had someone tell me that if you actually were really good at sports, that colleges would give you a full ride scholarship. I just so happened to be very good at softball, and I got the attention of the University of Pittsburgh. They offered me a full ride scholarship. Of course, I'm going to take it now, leaving warm California weather and going all the way over to what we call snow. Um, that was pretty different, but I'm gonna do it. Why? Because it was free school. So I got a full ride scholarship. I spent the four years at the University of Pittsburgh honing some habits and skill sets, but more importantly, getting my degree. I ended up getting a degree in marketing and also a degree in finance. Now, from college, I was actually recruited, ironically, to an amazing company that I was there for about 10 years. And when I was there, I was taught what everyone's taught, which is climb the corporate ladder. And I edged my way up, edged my way up. I ended up making 160,000 a year. And at the time, I was a single parent. But you know what I realized? The more money you make, the more you actually pay in taxes. And that's what really opened my eyes to understand there's actually three types of income that you can make. Number one is ordinary, number two is portfolio, number three is passive. Now the downside, what, what I've been taught, I was only taught how to make ordinary income. I wanted to venture off and understand the other elements of how to make income and how to create wealth. And that's what led my curiosity to run into this gentleman one fine day at Stroger Hospital by the name of Matt Zapala. And he was the first person that ever exposed me to what they call the life insurance industry. I didn't know about it from his lens. But the more I got to know about it, the more I realized this is an incredible industry. And I told him one day, I never thought that there was diversity in this industry. And he was the first one to break that stereotypical image I had. Now, I'm a minority woman. And for the most part, I didn't think I belonged in that industry until you give me the right platform. So what my husband mentioned by having not only the right industry, but the right platform is so key. The minute I came into this industry, I realized that being a minority woman, I can actually accelerate this and redefine the definition of what it meant to be a wife, to be a mother, and also be a businesswoman. My next motivation was getting that sales position. And the skills and habits I learned in that position really prepared me for the next move I was about to make. So when people say they're not good at sales, the reality is what you're currently learning at your nine to five when you work with groups, when you're working with different personalities, those are sales skills. The next element that I needed to learn was to get the kind of income that I needed to make, I had to choose a different way of doing it. Because what most people don't realize, the more money you make, the more you pay in taxes. So you don't make a six figure income, you don't make 100,000, you don't make 250, you don't make 500, you split that in half because that's the real income that you make. There's your gross income and then there's your net income. But the current platform I was in right now was not gonna get me to the kind of net income that I wanted to do. And I knew the only way to get the kind of income that I wanted to make was through entrepreneurship. So not only did I take my skills, and what I learned in sales, I applied it to knowing that I had to learn how to be an entrepreneur. But of course, the most scariest thing for people to think about, I just wanted to make sure that I was going to make income. And that's what led me to the industry. Now, if you look at life insurance in general, it's a 2000 year old industry that's never crashed. The last thing I ever worried about was if I was going to make income. Matter of fact, it was not just I'm going to make income, it was how much, and how much was predicated on how much I was willing to develop as an individual. Because the reality is your income matches your identity. So if you're not willing to change your identity, you can't be willing to change your income. They both go hand in hand. The last element is the platform. Now, the minute my personality came into this platform, it was game over. Why is that? I'm naturally competitive, I'm very strong-willed, I'm very strong-minded. And for a lot of times, I always felt that I had to hone that in and not express it too much. But what was so beautiful about this platform, the minute I came to PHP, I was able just to be myself. 
And when you're put in that certain dynamic of personal development, especially for a woman and a minority, the sky's the limit. And the craziest part about that, there was other like-minded women just like me. And that community was incredibly strong. For those of you that are seriously considering how to create your own wealth, for those of you that are seriously considering you're sick and tired of just making enough to pay the bills, enough to live paycheck to paycheck, and barely just trying to make enough just for ends meet. I challenge you guys to stop being afraid of what's really inside of you. I challenge you guys to not overthink it. I challenge you guys to not let fear overcome you. And I challenge you guys to really think about what a wise decision is. You need the right industry, the right platform, learning a set of skills that teach you how to develop and grow and create your own wealth. The minute you have all those dynamics into one, it's amazing what can be accomplished. And for those of you that are seriously considering how to create wealth, a couple of things to keep in mind. Number one, you might be the one person in your family that thinks different, so you can't wait for anybody else. You have to make the decision. Number two, you have to overcome your fear. So if you're afraid of it, that means you actually need to do it. And number three, what's the worst that can happen? In? You develop a new skill set, you develop as an individual, but let's look at the other side. What happens if you actually see the next best version of yourself? Just like me, when I first started, complete introvert. I never thought that this would happen. I just focused on small incremental goals. I embraced mistakes and learned from them. I also realized to ask for help is not a bad thing. And little by little, 10 months, 100,000. By the end of 12 months, 250. The next summer, 500. Then 750, then a million. Now nearly 2 million and growing. It's incredible, it's incredible. And I hope that you guys get to realize your full potential as well. And by the way, for all you moms out there, I have to tell you, everything I've learned and developed as an individual here, I've applied it to my everyday life, not just in marriage, but also to my children. And it's exciting to see that everything that I've evolved into, everything that I'm changing into being, is now reflecting now on my own kids. It's exciting. I'm the best mom and I'm relaxed. I love my life. I don't wash dishes. You don't, I don't cook, you don't want me to cook. I don't clean. I don't do laundry, I don't grocery shop, but I get to plan my day to day around my kids and having enjoyment with them and not the stress of life. It's a beautiful thing. Now that I've shared my perspective on how to create wealth, not just from a woman, not just from a minority, and not just from a mother and a wife, you guys now get to hear from our business partner, George Palio, who will also go over how much fun we have in this business. Thank you so much, Sheena. Guys, my name is George Palai. I'm a board counsel with PHP Agency. I'm going to pick up where Matt and Sheena left off. Uh, talking about the industry, right? When I first got into the industry, I was 18, 19 years old. Uh, I was serving tables. I was going to college. I was selling real estate. A friend of mine uh, that was my neighbor was making $30,000 a month. I was making $30,000 a year. And I realized that in one year of him working, he made the same that I made in 12 years. In three years of him working, he would make the same that I would make in 36 years at the restaurant. So when I got introduced to the industry, I wasn't looking for the traditional industry. We're going to talk about that here in a moment. I wasn't looking for a corporate environment. I wasn't looking for a, a, a nine to five job. I wasn't looking for a boring environment. I wanted something where I enjoyed going to work. When you look at some of the major companies that people go and apply for and they want to work at, they're not working there because of the pay. They're typically working there because of the culture and the opportunity to grow within the organization. So uh, let me kind of share. The average age in the industry today is 50, 60 years old. Okay, It's been a long time since the industry started really recruiting and bringing in new talent. Our average age is 35. Now, when I got started, I was 18. So today... I'm average now, okay? I'm 35 years old, but I got started at 18. To go from making $2,000 a month to seven-figure income, it gave me, a young guy, a chance to change my life. And there's so many people here that went to college, got the degree, they're, they're, they're at a corporation, they're trying to move up, they're limited as how much they can grow, they're limited on how much income they can make, and this is the season of their life as well where, where they really want to take off. These are the best years of their career building-wise. So we have people that are 18 to people that are 80 years old that are licensed in our organization. It's not an age thing with us. Secondly, Caucasian, white, 76% of our agents are multicultural, uh, Hispanic, African-American are two of the smallest segments in the insurance industry. They're two of the largest segments in PHP agency. Uh, boring, low energy. You go to a convention and you're sitting there, you're looking at everybody. They just can't wait for the meeting to finish, to go to the bar, to go drink, to go party. And they're not excited about what they're learning. You go to a PHP event, you know what you see? You see Nikki Jam on stage. You see Sebastian Maniscalco work in the crowd. You see Kevin Hart performing. Kobe Bryant, George Bush. You see different people uh, coming to our events and giving messages on how to improve, how to be better as people. 
Uh, then you have old school marketing, right? Innovative marketing strategies. When you look at a major insurance companies, you don't see them on social media. You don't see them on Instagram. You don't see them on Snapchat. You don't see them on TikTok. You don't see them on Facebook. You don't really see that. It's more of the uh, traditional, hey, here we are. We're a billion dollar company, but they're so disconnected from the audience. If I'm on Instagram, right, I'm not going to be going maybe to Wall Street Journal and, and nothing against Wall Street Journal. There's a lot of value in that. I'm not, uh, maybe I'm not going to be reading the newspaper. Maybe I'm not going to be uh, reading the Financial Times, right? But I still need to learn about money. I still need to be connected with what's going on uh, in, in the economy today. And so the fact that we reach people where they are, that we're innovative in the way that we connect to people we go to people we don't wait for people to come to us very big difference here quotas no quotas I never I, I never uh, wanted to be told what to do in terms of if you don't do this you're fired do you know how many people wake up every day in America and they're worried that if they get to work a minute late right they're gonna be fired that if they don't do what they need to do that week they're gonna be fired that if they don't meet that quota at the end of the month they're gonna be fired the amount of pressure today that people have at a job Right? It's, it's, it's to some degree, it's very also unhealthy. And then they take that stress, they go home. At the end of the night, they're, you, you, you get to your house and you're stressed out already. It's anxiety all day long. And then that turns into an argument. So people are living in very stressful environments at work versus as an entrepreneur, yes, there's pressure to perform. There's pressure to do better. There's pressure to increase our income and hit numbers and get bonuses. But it's not that something will be taken away from you if you don't do it. It's, hey, if here's, here's what you're gonna get, but if you do this, this is how much more can be added to you. Uh, uh, we'll we'll kind of talk about that as we go through this, but last year we received uh, over a couple, close to a couple hundred thousand dollars in bonuses. And, and we weren't expecting that in the form of a dividend. We weren't expecting some of the things that PHB does for us. So here, in terms of vesting, that means that you're the company, when you leave, what happens to your income? It goes away. Where here, what if you were able to build a book of business? What if you were able to build and go help some families and, and build some clientele? And every single year, those policies pay residual, those policies pay renewals. What if you could do something one time and get paid over and over and over on it? Uh, everybody wants to have an income that's coming in without having to go in to get the income. What if you decide to say, you know what, George? Uh, I'm going to go somewhere else. Love you guys. It just isn't for me. We're not going to stop that income from coming in. Why? Because you brought that client. So you're vested day one in the company where if, even if you were to leave and go to another company, we're still going to pay you on all that business, all that residual income because that's what's right. In terms of building the company brand, when you see mutual companies, right? I'm not going to say names, but you see certain mutual companies. You see big insurance and investment companies. All you see is the company. They're not figuring out, hey, how do we turn our top producer into a brand, into uh, an example in the industry. Why? Because they want to lift up the company. There's nothing wrong with that. Hey, you're building up the company. But what about the person that's in the field every night with families? What about the person that's doing all the work? What about that person, right? And so here we're very focused on helping our guys co-brand to build PHP agency, but to build their brand. Some companies from a compliance standpoint won't even allow people to do that. And they'll say, hey, 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 that's your building your own company. You can't go out shine the company. With us, we want you to, to shine. We want to build you up. When you look at Serve to Earn with uh, uh, Chris Hart, right? Former Apple employee, today half a million dollar earner with the company chairman council, right? Uh, you look at a leader like uh, Matt and Sheena Sapala, uh, uh, former Marine, uh, medical sales, right? And, and today making a seven figure income, seven figure, high seven figure income. When you look at a person like Rodolfo and Ceci Vargas, uh, uh, Latino hustle, and, and this guy came from El Salvador, him and his wife came from El Salvador, there's a lot of people that are coming from other countries, couldn't carry their, their education over. The, the great part about PHP is PHP wants to build you as a brand, build you as a company as well. And then lastly, get promoted through politics versus here, get promoted because you earn it. I remember uh, going to work every day and I, I'm working my tail off and I'm trying to be as perfect as I can. I'm trying to get there early. I'm trying to make sure the customer service is great. I'm making sure I'm pleasing my manager. I'm pleasing my boss. I'm doing, I'm doing everything I can above and beyond. And I see the people that are getting promoted, that are getting better shifts, that are getting a raise, that were people that just that person liked more. I never wanted to be in a position where somebody dictated what I earn next year. That's up to me. That should be, that sh I should couldn't be able to control that. And so here you get promoted through performance. Simple, black and white, you hit the goal, you get promoted. There's no, there's no uh, uh, politics, right? There's none of that stuff. It's go work, you move up, we're gonna promote you. So guys, in terms of going through the industry, that's some of the differences between the, the industry and PHP. And then lastly, in terms of platform, 
I came from uh, cutting grass. I came from working in a supermarket. I came from selling real estate, never sold a house, but became a realtor. Um, I came from working and serving food. Um, I, I didn't have a background in, in insurance. I didn't have a background when it came to uh, retirement planning, finances, annuities. Uh, I didn't have a background in sales. Uh, I, I wasn't the most uh, um, business oriented person just because I had never ran a business before. I, wouldn't, I didn't want to say it on the outside, but you know how we have these doubts, we have these fears, we have these worries on can I really do this? Can, can, I, can, I, can I do this? Is this really for me? I'm not really the money person or, you know, people know I'm not in the best financial situation and I didn't think that an 18, 19 year old uh, college dropout could one day run a business. Today, currently, we're doing close to $30 million a year. I didn't think I can do that. And so if you're the person watching this video today, whatever you don't think that you can do, it's very simple. You just haven't taken the time to learn it yet. Somebody hasn't shown you what to do. Maybe you don't have a mentor or a coach, but you have the ability to learn. And so what I love about PHP is the amount of direction that our platform gives us in terms of blueprint. That's a, a manual that literally takes you from A to Z, how to build a business. Uh, in terms of our product manual, that can take somebody that knows nothing about money and, and teach them everything that they need to know about what we do. And then all of that is packaged inside of software. Right? Today, we are leading. We are leading in the insurance industry. We are leading uh, when it comes to software and being a tech-enabled company. See, I, didn't, I, I wasn't a CEO. I didn't know how to look at a business and analyze a business. I, I, I don't have a business degree. And even the people that I, I brought into our business that have a business degree, they're learning how to manage somebody else's business, not necessarily how to build their own business. So for me, we have a software called Bamboo. Uh, it's changed our company. Close to every single day, there's close to 30,000 updates. I didn't say three, 30,000 updates. And you say 30,000 updates on what? On what's going on in the company? Who's leading? Update, hey, this policy is going here. Hey, this is what's happening with your license. Hey, by the way, one of your agents submitted a policy. Hey, where, where do I go to quote? And like, if I want to give a client a quote and say, hey, here's, here's how much a half a million is. Here's how much a million is. I can literally log in put in a few boxes, five, six, seven boxes, and it'll populate all the quotes. And then if I want to submit that, I just hit submit and we can send that to the company electronically. And all of that can be in one place. This has changed the speed of the company. People are growing, people are opening up territories and new offices uh, at a speed that I've never seen that in my career. And I've been in the business for a while, never seen that. A brand new person getting started, getting the blueprint, getting bamboo and literally opening an office in 90 days. Maybe you're looking for a system looking for direction, looking for mentorship on what do I do and how do I do it? Because there's a lot of people that wanna be entrepreneurs. There's a lot of people that wanna make a better income, but they just don't know how to do it, right? And so lastly, guys, as I go through this, we're at a time right now uh, where the market's been the highest that it's ever been. In the history of the stock market, it's never been higher. And there are so many people that have invested and they've gotten great returns, but anything that goes up, 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 has to at one point go down. And I'll, I'll always ask people, hey, do you, did you lock your car? Yeah, why? So that people don't steal the things inside your car because it's valuable, right? You lock your home, yes, right? You, why? Because you don't want people stealing your things. You don't want to lose what you have, right? But the majority of people today are exposed in, in a way they don't even know that all of their money, all of their retirement funds, the large majority of it is in an account where at any moment they could lose it. See, imagine working for 40 years and at the end of your life, after you've done everything right, you just don't understand timing. You just don't understand that everything that you have is at risk and that you really aren't in control of what's going to happen to that if the stock market goes down. And so that's why people need to be educated more now than ever on how to protect what they have. And so we're at a time right now where the baby boomers, you have these close to 80 million people, right? 76 million people are approaching retirement at the peak of the market being the highest it's ever been with extreme exposure. And that's why there's such a great opportunity right now to be able to sit down with people and help people move their money, help people move their 401k, their IRA, their Roth IRA into an index annuity where it's protected. And so as we transition, guys, I want to talk about how we get paid. Um, let's say you, 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 you say, George, you know what? What Matt said, what Sheena said made a lot of sense. I, I, I want to make a, a better income. Uh, I, I want to maybe buy a home. Uh, I, I want to move. I want to put my kids in a better school. I want to upgrade my life. It's been a long time since we take a vacation or when we do take a vacation, it's financed through debt or it's a vacation, but it's not our dream vacation. I want to help my mom and dad. They're getting a little bit older uh, and they're, they're, I see them just, they're, they're, their body isn't the same anymore. They're tired. I wish I can help them. I, I don't want my husband or my wife to have to go to work. I would like for one person to be able to stay home and be with the kids. I want to be able to have more time with my kids at 
this season in their life. Man, you know what? We really want to move out of this neighborhood. It's just not safe. Uh, uh, man, we, I, I, told my, I told my wife I was going to buy a dream house and that I was going to give her this life and we were going to travel the world. And maybe you haven't been able to keep your promise. Uh, maybe you haven't been able to accomplish those dreams that you have. And I'm talking about the dreams that when you're a little kid and, and, and you, you imagine what your life's going to look like, right? Your dreams are up here and then you get your first job and your income's down here. And so what ends up happening, instead of figuring out how do I raise my income to match my dreams, we typically lower our dreams to match our income, right? And we, and we, stop, we stop dreaming. And, uh, and that, that's an issue, right? One of the greatest problems with mankind today is that we don't dream anymore. And so what if there was a way you say, I don't have to quit my job and start a business and I know nothing about it completely by myself, but what if there was a way you can learn an industry with a mentor, with a system on a part-time basis and you could just test it. You can get involved, get your license or whatever state you're in and, and you could say, hey, what if I do this part-time? Well, let's say you help two families part-time per month and each one of them saving $250 per month for insurance, savings, retirement. We get advanced one year up front. So that means whatever company is the best for that client, they pay us for bringing them a client. We don't mark up the product. We don't add any fees. We don't charge the person anything for what we do. We're gonna find the best thing that's there for them. So they pay us up front $3,000. Why? 250 times 12, $3,000. So let's say you help two families per month. That's $6,000. As an associate, you're at a 40% contract. That would be $2,400 per month, $28,000 per year roughly. What if you did that just over the next uh, uh, 10 years, right? That's an extra $300,000, closer to $300,000 in income. Would that help you retire sooner? Maybe you say, you know what, George, if I can do this part-time and I can make an extra $2,400 a month, what if I help one extra client a week, right? And now you go from part-time to maybe a personal producer. You could still be part-time. I've had a lot of people in our business that have even made a six-figure income. One of our fastest guys, right? Fastest to six figures on a part-time basis did it in 11 months. And so, um, and so here you say, I'm gonna become a personal producer. And you do four clients per month, one client per week, $250 a month times 12, that's 3,000. So that's $12,000 total. At 60%, you'd make $7,200, $86,400 per year. Could you quit your job at $86,000? Could you say, hey, you know what? Instead of putting that time and putting these years into somebody else's business, what if we put it into ours? Maybe you start part-time and you're a husband and wife and you're doing this together. They say that one horse can pull 75% of its body weight, two horses can pull 250% of their body weight. What if you guys do this together as a couple on a part-time basis and you start making an extra four or $5,000 a month and then one person says, you know what? I think I can quit my job. You quit it and we'll build it. And then the other person says, hey, you know what? I'm making more now here then you are there, why don't you, and then all of a sudden there's two of you guys building your own business. If you're gonna give your energy, your time, your life, if you're gonna miss out on certain things in life with your kids, if you're gonna have to give up on some goals and some dreams, what if you can make some changes and say, let's go build something that's ours? And so you say, let me become a business owner with PHP. What does that look like? Well, let's say you have 10 agents. There are people out there that want a better income. So you, you're able to sit down, show them what we do, help them get their license, train them. They get started. That's one of your agents. Every time they go out there and they help a family, that insurance company is going to pay them, but they're also going to pay you. Why? Because you brought another agent that brought that client. Without you, that client wouldn't be there. The agent wouldn't be there. So what does that look like? If you have 10 agents and each one helps two to three people per week, so they're each doing 10 families per month, okay? Let's say that each family is putting away 25 bucks a week, 100 bucks a month. We get paid one year up front again, so that's $1,200. So if each one of them, each application is $1,200, that's $12,000 per agent. Times 10, that's $120,000. You as a broker would get 25% of that, which is $30,000, $30,000 per month, 360 per year. When I first came and I saw this, in my mind, my identity wasn't a $360,000 identity. It was a two dollars $3,000 identity. So I didn't believe that that was possible. I didn't believe I could make that income. I figured maybe other people do, but I don't know if I can do that. And, and I said, but, but even if I can't do that, what if I mess this thing up and I at least get to 100,000 here? If they're telling me I can make 360, I could probably mess this up and get to 100,000. And that's exactly what happened. And we made $100,000 and then 200,000 and then 300,000 then 400,000 then 400, then five, and then a million dollars, right? Because I decided to go from part-time to personal producer to business owner to agency builder. Meaning that some of those agents, out of these 10 agents, you're going to find some people that they themselves also think big. 
They say, hey, I'd love to open my own office here because I've always wanted to live here. I'd love to have multiple offices. And you find, you find a few people like you that want to do something big. So let's say that you have 12 marketing directors. That's what we consider a business owner with us. So you have 12. Each one of these teams is helping 20 clients. So you have 12 brokers. Each team's helping 20 clients. If each office is doing 60000 per month in premium, 12 times 60 is Yourself, as a broker, at a 27% overwrite on that, you make 194 per month, $2.3 million per year. I remember I, when I went to this presentation, and Patrick, our CEO, who I'm going to speak about in a moment, he says, why don't you go to your boss tomorrow, and why don't you ask your boss, hey, boss, Mr. Boss, Mrs. Boss, how do I make three, dollars $400,000 a year? And, 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 and he says, when you go to your boss, if your boss isn't making that, they're probably going to laugh and say, ha, if I don't make that, what makes you think you can make that? He says, the moment that you hear that, you know that you're in the wrong place. See, when I got into the industry and I'm around Patrick, uh, every time I saw him, man, it increased his income, half a mil, million, deck a million, hundred million, right? And you look at somebody that you've literally seen go to being worth hundreds of millions of dollars. It changes your perspective on what you think is possible. We were at his house recently in Fort Lauderdale and we're sitting in the back of the house and the boats are going by and the jet skis are going by. And he says, Palayo, one of the biggest issues is most people never get a chance to witness somebody else's transformation. So they don't fully know that that's possible for them. Sometimes your one association, your one uh, relationship, your one mentor, your one opportunity away from everything changing in your life. And I met Patrick and Patrick saw in me something that I couldn't see in me. I saw it in my heart, but I didn't think I could do it. I wanted it to believe that it was possible, but I didn't think I could. I hoped to win, but I expected to fail. And, and I had to change that because I just, we don't come from that, right? And if you do, you know it's possible. But if you don't, guess what? At some point, if you don't come from a wealthy family, a wealthy family has to come from you. And every time I progressed, every time I hit a new cash flow, he would push me and push me and push me and get me to think bigger. I remember the first time I made a six-figure income in a month, phone call was, hey, great job, but you should be making that per week because of your potential. This can't be about money anymore. If it is, you're going to stop right now. This has to be about your capacity. Like, who has those people in their corner? That's the power of our mentorship. To walk in today, we're filming this here at our headquarters uh, that's currently in Dallas, Texas. And, you know, to get to a point where you start as a, a startup, you have nothing. You start, you have nothing. Don't have one employee. And today, to go to almost having 100 employees, being all over the United States, 49 states in Puerto Rico, um, and, and, and the, the stories of the people that have gotten involved here, guys. The story of, a, of a, a Matt and Sheena Sapala, right? Uh, from marine and medical sales, like we mentioned, to today, seven-figure income earners. The story of Rodolfo and Ceci Vargas. They come to this country with nothing today, seven-figure income earners. The story of a, a Jose and Marlene Gaetan. They come from bill collections and real estate and, and, and start off with nothing. And today, seven-figure income earners and have a, an agency that also, all those agencies, $20, $30 million a year. All these people that just different walks of life, some have degrees, some don't, some come from business, some don't, some military, some not, some college educate, some not. Everybody, we're, we're very different. We, you'll see the pictures of all of our leaders. Everybody's got a different story, but we had one thing in common. We wanted to do something big. See, you're a couple moves away. Maybe your first move is just making some part-time income. Maybe your second is saying, hey, you know what? Let me do a little bit more. Let me see if I can replace my income. Oh my God, I replaced my income. Then your third is maybe I could teach a couple people. I don't really know how to do this, but I'm learning. I think I could at least teach somebody how to do what I do. And all of a sudden, you're getting promoted at a big event. You're walking on stage. You're getting promoted to broker. And then from there, you're able to say, hey, you know what? I know what I, how to do it I did it let me teach you how to do it and you fast forward to today I never thought that I would go from making two thousand dollars a month to a hundred thousand dollars a month I never thought that was possible guys I don't have a two-year degree I don't have a four-year degree I didn't come from money I didn't come from, we grew up in Palmdale California small little town my mom worked retail dad worked in a casino they lost their businesses at one point struggled had to rebound great parents raised three amazing kids but we didn't we didn't we didn't have a lot of money growing up but you know what my dad did one day we go to Beverly Hills and he takes us to an open house. It's a six, $7 million house. And I don't know if you've ever done this. If you haven't, go do it. Do it for yourself. Sell yourself the dream, okay? You don't have to have the money to go and walk into the open house. Sometimes, what are we gonna look at it for? We don't have the money. Sell yourself the dream. Maybe you need to get inspired a little bit. And so we go to this house, six, $7 million house, waterfall pool or uh, infinity pool. 
and we see a Ferrari and a Lambo. And guys, the only time I ever saw a Ferrari and a Lambo is when I went to Toys R Us. Okay, some of you guys have never been to Toys R Us. There used to be a thing called Toys R Us. It was kids' heaven. If you died, you went to heaven. It looked like Toys R Us as a kid. And I remember getting a little model car, and I would go home with my dad, and we would put it together and glue and all this stuff, and I would dust them in my room like, man, one day, and I'd have a Lamborghini poster. And I know some of you guys aren't motivated by money. That's okay. But at that moment in my life, I was just dreaming, whatever your dream is. Maybe that's giving, that's charity, that's, maybe that's building a restaurant, fashion, uh, uh, maybe that's traveling the world, maybe that's retiring parents, uh, maybe that's putting your kids in better school. Whatever motivates you, cutting a check to your church, whatever motivates you. I was a kid and I was driven and I said, oh my God, what if one day I have this? And my dad said to me, he says, I said, Dad, can we buy this house? See, I have no idea that, you know, $6 million home and your $50,000 a month mortgage. I'm just dreaming because when you're a kid, it doesn't, you don't put a price tag to your dreams. You do that as an adult. And I said, Dad, can we buy this? He says, I can't right now, but one day you will. See, what happened at that moment, he made a kid believe that those dreams were possible. What I love about PHP is the culture around our trips. Uh, we had around 450 people this year we took to Hawaii. Uh, we just came back from uh, Cancun. We have a trip coming up to Tulum. We were in Greece together. We were in Dubai together. We were in uh, uh, the Caribbean together. Some of our guys, they, the company rented a yacht for them and sent them all over the Maldives. Uh, you, you see contests that the company puts together, and they're sending people to the Super Bowl this year, to uh, uh, NBA finals, NBA championships. We PHP world class in the way that it treats its top performers, and that, that could be you. As as we finish today, you have three choices, three options. What are you going to do after watching this? One, people are going to do nothing. It's exciting, good stories, motivation. Guy made me laugh a little bit or maybe not. But you know what? We do nothing with it. We just keep staying at our job. Number two, you say, you know what? I got to educate myself. Let me go do what everybody else is doing right now. Let me go back to school to try to do that. When that's a, that's a tough situation right now with the number of people that can't find work, that have degrees that don't work in that field. So what's your last option? What's your third option? Start a business. Become an entrepreneur. Get involved with PHP Agency. That's what I did. I was scared. I was nervous. I didn't know if this was for me, but I took action, right? I love this quote. It says, procrastination is the assassination of your destination. There are so many people that should be healthier, but they haven't taken action in that area of their life. There are so many people that should have more in savings, less in debt, more in investments, but they haven't taken action in that area of their life. There are so many people that want to own a business, but they haven't taken action in that area of life. And so what we normally do when we watch a YouTube video or a motivational speaker or an opportunity video, we look at it and we say, wow, that was exciting, good for them. And we feel good in that moment, but then we go back to our regular life. We go back to the apartment, we go back to the car we don't want to drive, we go back to the bank account that we don't want, we go back to the retirement account that's not there, we go back to the vacations that we can't take, all because we chose at one point to procrastinate, to, to, to push today's responsibilities into tomorrow, to take the action that we could have done today and say, well, let me leave it for tomorrow. I remember we would do these meetings uh, in person, and the first time I heard Patrick do it, he said, Many of you are going to say, hey, that's awesome. Let me think about it. And his response to those people were, how has let me think about it helped you in becoming financially independent? Has that worked for you? And I know for me at that moment in my life, I was broke, right? I, didn't, I wasn't where I wanted to be. I wasn't making the income I wanted to make. I didn't have the associations. I wasn't in an environment where I was personally growing. I wasn't being challenged. I wasn't having fun. I wasn't building something that was mine. And, and, and some of you guys are living a good life. They say the enemy of a great life is a good life. So maybe you're in a much better place than I was, right? But when I sit with people, even the guys that are making two, $300,000 a year, I'm like, wow, you can make 10 times that. Anyways, guys, with that being said, I want to challenge you right now, right? Food tastes best when it's hot. I want to challenge you right now to call the person back that invited you to uh, watch this and have them share, right, either set up an appointment with them so you guys can get back together in person, on Zoom, wherever, the, depending on where you're located, or have them share the compensation video with you as well so you can learn about in detail how we get paid. But take action today. With that being said, God bless you guys. Thank you for watching. We look forward to working with you in the future.